Well, I went to my leftover shelf where I put little pieces and decided I want to clear it off. And these pieces were just like that. And this piece of walnut was longer and I cut it in half. Got something in mind I'm going to make. It'll be another bowl from a board. But it's not going to be cut on the bandsaw with twisty lines. It's going to be all cuts made on the table saw, but it's still going to be a little different than usual. So let's go ahead and start cutting these pieces up and I'll get them glued together. Okay, so I won't need this one or this one. Okay, I'm all set to glue it all together. And I've been asked a number of times, what kind of glue do I use? I use the Tight Bond Original. It's all about the same, the glue is. We're going to just kind of skip through this gluing process because I know it's not all that exciting. Okay, here it is. It's all cleaned up. I squared up the ends. Looks like it's ready to use, but I'm going to cut it into strips again. All right, I now have eight individual strips and I need to glue them back together. So if you've already figured out what my next step is, let me know in the comments. Because this looks like an option, right? That's not the option. I'm going to flip every other one. I'm going to glue one together and show you how I do it and I'll glue these together off camera and when I come back it'll be time to get it mounted in the lathe. Then I'll get some water, I'll wipe this off and by the time I do all that it'll be time to put clamps on. Okay, I've got it all cleaned up. It's eight and seven eight square. The blocks are an inch and an eighth thick. I'm only going to cut one ring out of this because I want to try to maintain that look. If I put more than one, it's going to taper down a long ways and I'm just thinking I might lose it. I've got a tenon hot glued onto this block and they hold quite well. I'll put a link in the description for Gord Rock's channel because I think that's where I picked up that trick. And he does it on lots of things. And I've done it on pieces way bigger than this, so I trust it. Let me get that mounted up. It will get my little fixture set up and we'll cut one ring on it and I'll get it glued together. It's all set up, ready to cut. This is the little cutting fixture that I made for cutting rings. And I have a video for that. And this is the fixture that I made. That's 50 degrees. That's 45. I'll put a link in the description on that. Also this is the parting tool I've been asked about. It came on a little set that I actually bought at a garage sale. It was brand new. I don't have any idea what the brand is. but if you search. The other thing I found that around 500-550 RPM seems to cut the best. And I'm hoping this tool is long enough to get through here.
There we go. Came out really nice. Okay, I've got two separate pieces now. And we'll just locate this on the bottom, glue it in place, and we can get it back on the lathe and turn whatever I need to out of here. Okay, so this is one of the easier ones to line up because I have all these straight lines. Just going to get it really close so I can get glue on it. So now I see where I need glue. And you can see that I didn't get any chip out on that at all. And I didn't get any here. It's just a matter of having your tool really sharp before you cut through. And that's about as good as it can get. I want to push down and twist it to distribute the glue and I can feel it grabbing already sorry about the bad camera angle here that disc was starting to set up and I had to pull the board away a little bit so I could get the clamp underneath it but I got the clamp on there got it tightened down and I let it sit all night and we're getting ready to get it mounted in the lathe now Okay, getting ready to turn the back side. And I'll just show you what I have here. I've used this numerous times. This is a ball bearing arbor that fits into your Morse taper. It has a 1x8 thread. This chuck has a 1x8 thread. So I have that chuck attached to the tenon that I put on here. What I wanted to point out, not only do you want a really sharp tool before you make that final cut through the piece, you can hear the sound you're almost there so go as light as you can into that and when it cuts through you will not tear it out there is absolutely no tear out in either side of this so you have to not press really hard right at the end so I just wanted to point that out this is a Longworth chuck that I made a while Let's back check it out and see how balanced it is Actually, it's not too bad. So I just want to take about half of that thickness off of that top piece and also blend a little tapered area into it. I've got a half inch full gouge. nice and flat and we're about half of what it was to begin with so I like that now if you don't have one of these negative rig scrapers you might want to try one because I'll tell you what they'll help you out many times it's really good for when you have some air you're cutting and trying to really get it perfect although I was able to scrape that pretty nicely doing a little shear scraping. Still, it'll help me get down into, into that corner and blend it. And go ahead and bring it out here. Just going to go ahead and get this flipped around, turn the inside, and then I'll get the sanding done on both the inside and the outside. Okay, I've got it flipped around and it's in the chuck now on the headstock and this backside is running very true. So the way it was mounted the other way was pretty much right on. I'll show you that that arbor. I have it out of the chuck now. That's what that looks like. That's a ball bearing. There's the threads. Screws into the back of there. You could make wooden blocks, use them for stabilizing pieces. I've done all kinds of things with it. I find it very useful. Still using the half inch bowl gouge. And we are 
very well balanced and it looks to me like that inside was very centered. So we'll go ahead and do about 725 RPM. I'll scrape this top edge and sneak up on on that joint right there and see if I like it. Okay, I think it's time to go ahead and sand all this up. But that's going to wait till tomorrow. Okay, it's time to go ahead and sand this, and it's actually fairly smooth, so I'll just use 120 grit and work my way up through 400. I'll do the front, and I'll show you just a little bit on the back, and then we'll come back and we'll get a finish on it. Spinning the lathe forward at about 460 RPM. I'll be able to do some of this. Like so. And then I'll just take sheets and go over the rest of it like that. And that was already pretty smooth. Okay, I sanded it to 320 and stopped because I'll be using polycrylic on here and the sanding sealer for that really raises the grain. So I'll have to sand it again anyways and then I'll hit it at 400 and put the rest of the finish on. And it might take a couple coats of the sealer. And basically I just kind of wipe this on Pretty heavy actually. It really soaks it up and it's easy to sand. I'll come back after I'm uh, ready to put the polycrylic. Okay, I've got three coats of, of the sanding sealer right here on the face and I do on the back as well and I did say that I'd show you how I sand that and finish it but instead I'm going to show you how I prepare for the polycrylic. So my next step would be to use Scotch-Brite. And this is a Phil Anderson trick. The Scotch Brite sticks to your sanding pad. So similar to, to sanding about 450 RPM. And then I can get this. And that is pretty much ready. When we do the final, I'll use the white scotch bright. So let me wipe this down and I'll put a coat of polycrylic on. Alright, pretty much the same thing as the sanding sealer. And that's the polycrylic. This time, I'm just going to try to wipe a very thin coat on. And I'll do this three times. I don't really want it built up because then I'll probably have to sand it. So it's just a light coat, that's all it takes. It dries very fast. I'll get a couple more coats on there and we're going to shine this up real nice. 
I put this last coat of polyacrylic on it about 20 hours ago and it's actually very smooth but I'll show you the process of getting it polished out and I'll start with this white scotch bright even though it hardly needs it This lets me get out on that corner without trying to hold something. So now it's even smoother. I use the Axe Abrasive Paste. It's, if you haven't used it, that's what the can looks like. With this same paper towel, I'll just buff it in. And I'm not going to show you a lot of this because I do have a video showing how I do this. And I'll put a link in the description for that. And I'll go into more detail on it. This is the process. And we rub this out and we take a dry towel and, and buff it back out. So I'll be back when it's all buffed out. Okay, if you've been wondering how I'm going to get this hot glued tenon off of here without using a chisel and a big hammer, let me show you. I have got a little denatured alcohol in here. I'm just going to let it run down onto that hot glue. Try to keep from letting it drip down over here. I got my little surgical cover on this to protect it. It'll kind of draw it underneath there. And it's actually loosened that glue up that quick. There it went. No damage done. Get this sanded up a little bit, get the finish on it, and I'll be right back. Okay, it's all done, and I am pretty happy with how it turned out. I think it looks very interesting. It's still 8 and 7 eighths inch square, and it's 2 and a quarter to the bottom. And that's because I only wanted to cut one ring in here. I wanted to keep the squares as flat as I could. And if I went down one more ring, there would have been an angle the squares would have been on, and they would have kind of got elongated. And I was looking for this look, and I think it worked out pretty well. Also, I didn't sign the bottom because I didn't want to interrupt the pattern in there. I used Minwax water-based sandy sealer and Minwax polyacrylic for the finish. And I went over it with Axe Abrasive Paste and Polish, and that always makes it look very nice. So make sure you stick around and check out the pictures because I'll have a lot better angles on it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, do me a favor and click that like button. And while you're there, it would be great if you could share the video around. Those two things will really help my channel grow. Leave a comment. I read them all and I do my best to answer them all. Thanks to all my subscribers. And if you're not, please consider doing so. I do a mix of all types of turnings. Some are simple and some are complex. So let me know your favorite. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.